Shalom and welcome to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul, your Biblical Hebrew Podcast. Shalom and welcome to our Biblical Hebrew Podcast. Today I would like to speak to you about the term Hebrew slave, Hebrew slave, the Jubilee, the Day of Atonement and the connection between those three. In Exodus 21, we meet the first time the term Eved Ivri, Eved Ivri, Hebrew slave, and so says the verse. When you shall buy a Hebrew slave, six years he shall work for you, and in the seventh year he shall go for his freedom. Since the Bible is not a book of law or history or geography, what does the Bible mean in the term Hebrew slave? And why is it so important to abstract this term in order to understand what the Bible or even the Zohar means in Parashat Mishpatim by mentioning the term Hebrew slave. The word Eved, Eved, slave, is written with three letters, Ein, Bet, Dalet. Ein is 70, Bet is 2, together they are 72, and Dalet is 4, together they form 76. 76 is the value of the Hebrew word for slave, Eved. Now, Hebrew, Ivri, is written with four letters, Ein, Bet, Resh, Yod. Ein is 70, Bet is 2. Together, 72. Resh is 200, so 272. Plus Yod, which is 10, we have 282. 282 plus 76 gives us the value of 358. 358 is the value of the word Mashiach, Messiah, or Messiah, the one who converses. Again, the one who converses is the one who brings the reality or the life which is coming every moment from the infinite. So the Hebrew slave, according to the Bible, is the one who has access to those worlds. This is why David in Psalms 105 says the following, Le'eved nimkar Yosef. Joseph was sold to be a slave. And taking into consideration Potiphar's wife speech, she named Joseph Ish Ivri Letzachek. She names Joseph in the term Ish Ivri, Hebrew men, and if we connect David's words and her words together, we get a very interesting picture. Joseph is a Hebrew slave in Egypt. What is the importance of Hebrew slave in Egypt? Egypt is not a geographical territory. Egypt basically stands for the world of duality, the world that demands every day to create more and more products, to flood the markets, the world that has no peace. In this context, we understand why it is very important that the concept of Joseph will be descent or will be borrowed into the world of Egypt. Because Joseph, as a Hebrew slave, can bring from the world beyond an access to the infinite. The world of Egypt 
is always defined by a form, by narrowness, by rigidity, the flexibility, the ability to move in the spirit, the ability to create new worlds from nothing. This is the art of Joseph. And this is what is so important that Joseph will stay in Egypt. The term that Potiphar's wife uses, Ish Ivri Letzachek, Hebrew men to mock us, is quite an interesting term. Ish Ivri, Ish Ivri, Hebrew men, has the value of 593. 93 is the value of the Hebrew word tzag. Tzag is high priest. And Ishivri, 593 is five times high priest Kohen Gadol. And Joseph, Joseph was the second or the deputy, so to speak, of Pharaoh in Egypt. Now to mock us, let's Potiphar's wife, if you read her speech, it seems that she has like a bitter speech because Joseph was not correlating with her wish. But what does she really say by using the word ish ivri letzachek, Hebrew men to laugh or to mock? This is not a sentence that we read, so to speak, in a cynical way, like people might think of, but she's really saying the truth. Ish ivri letzachek, a Hebrew man who comes to laugh because the laughter is the fruit of the infinite. The laughter is the fruit of the virtue in a world which is not limited at all. And of course, in Egypt, there is no place for laughter, for joy, for happiness or air. In Egypt, we have short breaths. Nobody can listen later to Moses because they're short breath. They don't manage to capture their breath. There is no place for laughter because there is no perspective. Everything is short perspective, short and narrow. Everything is locked in a form. There is no place for creativity. This is what Potiphar's wife claims. Hebrew men, ish ivri letzachek. He comes to offer us another perspective which is laughter, happiness, and joy. Letzachek, Letzachek reminds us the name Yitzchak, his grandfather. Joseph, grandfather, is Isaac. Not in the term of genealogy only, but as a grandson of Isaac, or as a descendant, what descends from laughter, is the ability to converse, to have a perspective, a deep perspective about life. This is why the Bible in Exodus 21.2 speaks about Hebrew slave so thoroughly. What is the meaning of Hebrew slave? And in the book of Leviticus 25, when you read about the Jubilee, the Jubilee takes this whole concept accordion of Hebrew slave and put it into perspective. The Jubilee counts seven times seven, which is 49 plus one. And then we have the Jubilee year, which is the 50 year in which we proclaim liberty. Proclaim liberty from tyranny, from the regime of small-minded people because we are we are we are limited in time and space and the jubilee comes to all of us and says one thing we are limited and by accepting this limitation and admitting it a new door is being opened to us the door of the soul the door to the infinite this is why the proclamation of freedom and liberty happens in Yom Kippur, in the Day of Atonement. Because in the Day of Atonement, we are reaching or we are recognizing our limitation. 
why in the day of atonement and now we move a bit to another realm but we shall go back a lunar year composed of 355 days from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah we are counting 355 days but a solar year has 365 so what do we do we count from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah 355 and we add the bridging days or the connecting days between Rosh Hashanah of the coming year and it's Yom Kippur which are 10 we connect them back and then we have a perspective of 365 days again from Rosh Hashanah of the last year to Rosh Hashanah of this year we have 355 plus the bridge between this Rosh Hashanah and this Yom Kippur it's another 10 and then we have 365 then we have a full perspective and not just this we also have a system that teaches us the time is very flexible time is not only linear or cyclical but time is spiral time is composed of two perspectives the cycle and the line and then we have a spiral to the infinite this is a very very deep perspective of time that the bible gives us now 365 what do we do with this number 3 times 65 is 195 the hebrew word for 195 is katse the edge or the end in yom kippur we reach or we meet our limitations as living in time and space and by recognizing this fact in a way we are humbling accepting the existence of the soul this is why yom kippur is very very important from soul perspective so once in 50 year in the day of atonement in yom kippur we proclaim liberty from tyranny from our limitations from our small mindedness this is a very very important day and with this understanding i would like to wish for all of us beautiful yom kippur wonderful day of atonement leshana tova tikatevu vetechatemu for a good year you shall be written and sang in the book of life. Amen. Thank you for listening to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul, your Biblical Hebrew podcast. For more information, articles, videos, and interactive classes, please visit hebrew.learnoutlive.com or join our YouTube channel. Shalom v'chol tu. Thank you.